Hello and welcome to Talking Whiskey. My name is Grant and today I'm going to be talking about a bottled and bond whiskey. Now this is a follow-on video from one that I did on bourbon labelling. If you want to go check out that video before watching this one, have a look at this link up here. So let's go over what a bottled and bond whiskey is. Now the first thing I should probably mention is, is that typically you're going to see them on bourbons. So that's why it's a follow-on from the bourbon video. But there are other whiskies that you can do bottled and bond with. But we'll stick with bourbon for this video because that's going to be the one that you find the most. Now there are five main rules to be a bottled and bond bourbon or a bottled and bond whiskey. Now the first rule is, is that it has to be made in one distillation season. Now a distillation season is classified as from January to June and then from July to December. Now the second rule is that it has to be made by one distiller during that season. Then the third rule is it has to be aged in a bonded warehouse. That then leads on to the fourth rule, which is it has to be aged for a minimum of four years. And then finally, the fifth rule is, is it's got to be 100 proof or 50% ABV. So let's quickly touch on what a bonded warehouse is. Now, in its simplest terms, it's basically a building where you can keep dutable goods without having to pay the duty on them at that time. If you then decide to then export it out of the country, you don't need to pay duty on it until it leaves the country. If you then want to sell it within the country, so if you've got a bourbon and you're then selling it in the country, you then have to pay the duty once it leaves the bonded warehouse. That then kind of leads on to, well, why would you do this for a rule for a whiskey anyway? So it first started back in 1897, where the Bottled and Bond Act was passed in America. Now this was basically to, to try and give a, a level of credibility and a level of recognition for distillers making whiskey at the time. The idea being is that if you had it within a federal bonded warehouse, you knew that it had like a stamp of approval from the government because it was in a federally bonded warehouse. There is another element where you do get certain tax benefits, of course, because it is you know, you don't have to pay the duty on it straight away. If you're exporting it, you never have to pay it. If you've got it internally, you only pay it once it leaves the warehouse. So the, the level of credibility kind of isn't needed much anymore nowadays in America when you're making whiskies. So you don't need that kind of stamp of approval typically anymore. And the tax benefits are nice, but again, doesn't seem to be the driver behind distilleries doing it. I suppose the reason could be that distilleries want to have this throwback tradition to the bottled and bond whiskey and you have to go through quite a lot of quite strict rules to be able to call yourself a bottled and bond whiskey in the first place now that in itself could be the driver is that you've got a whiskey that you know has had to go through certain regulations and that you're going to be ideally very consistent with it or as consistent as you can be with it because it's got to meet certain things that one still has got to make it it's only in one one distillation period you've got a minimum of four years it's got to be a bonded warehouse you've got all these rules that theoretically are going to try and make this a fairly creditable product now when you've got big distilleries like evan williams or jack daniels or even jim beam that are doing bottled and bond whiskies they kind of don't need that. It's just an extra level to their expression and their core ranges that they're doing. Now I have to say, whilst I've touched on those distilleries, I don't actually have a bottled and bond whiskey. So I have to apologize for that. Otherwise I'd have a physical example to show you. So hopefully that's made that a little bit clearer. Now I didn't want to put this in the bourbon labeling video because bourbon labeling is fairly complicated as it is and adding in the rules that you need to be for a bottled and bond bourbon just is a little bit of overkill. So if you guys have any other suggestions on things you'd like to see, don't forget to give a comment down below on what they would be. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And of course, cheers to you all.